Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Today on Smart Money, Radhika Gupta of Edelweiss is joining me to talk about the rising social media influence on several sectors, particularly retail investors in the mutual fund space. So this is something that everyone's talking about. The mutual fund growth that we've seen has been phenomenal in the past couple of months and in fact the past couple of years. And a large part of that growth has been due to rising social media and digital infrastructure that is. Radhika, thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. First, I want to start by just setting the context, right? How has retail investor participation impacted the mutual fund industry's AUM in India? Now it's reached 50,000 crores, right, in terms of AUM. So what kind of growth do you see here on and how has social media played a part? So I think it's been a phenomenal run in terms of growth, but I always say it's a large target market and it's just beginning to take off. If you look at the past, you know, retail AUM is largely equity focused AUM and Today we have about 30, 30, lakh, 30 lakh plus crores of equity AUM in the industry and that is largely retail investor AUM. You guys keep reporting we have almost a 20,000 crore SIP book. To give you context when I joined this industry in 2017 it was 4,000 crores and I don't think anyone could have predicted this kind of headline growth. And I think words like SIP and mutual fund, I joke, have become the material of memes. So they've really become a part of popular culture. And that is only going to expand as younger generational people are part of a more aspirational India. So I think you moved from the FD and post office generation to the generation like me who started equities when they were 30 or 25 to the generation who's watching Shark Tank and hearing about the word equity when they're seven or eight years old. So I think that's a natural expansion. And yet we have miles to go before we sleep. If you look at equity penetration in India, mutual fund AUM as a percentage of GDP, it's still about 16%. The global average, I'm told, is at 80% now. So we have five times of a distance to cover. So lots of room covered, but lots more to cover. And at least the faith in mutual fund structurally as a product has made a lot of headway. It's interesting, this growth, you know, a lot of growth also happened in the post-COVID era mm. because of digitization. I think digital platforms, fintechs, etc., made mutual funds easy to access. Even a lot of distributors who do transactions do it through platforms like PSE or NSE. So most of our transactions are digital in some form. This also coincided back to social media with a rise in 4G penetration in India, with a rise in the number of mobile phone subscribers. So can you attribute exact causation? No, but it's happened in the background of geo rising, mobile phone penetration rising, social media users rising. All that has happened and made mutual fund a much more convenient access product. Today as a younger AMC, you don't need to set up a branch in a tier three city because every mobile phone in cell in some sense is a branch for you. Absolutely. And as you said, you know, um, SIPs, mutual funds has now become a part of popular culture and that's happened in the last five, seven years. So you said we've gone from 4,000 crores of an SIP book to 20,000 crores maybe in the past six, seven years. What is the scope from here on? And can you help us understand how does a rise in mutual fund folios correlate with the increase in broadband subscribers? Yeah, so if you look at, I mean, I did some projections for five years from now, and I think you will be sitting on a 100 lakh crore mutual fund industry. From 50 lakh crore today, you'll be sitting on a 100 lakh crore mutual fund industry. You also will be sitting on an SIP book that's 30 to 35,000 crores in five years from now, which is a very large number. That means two and a half lakh crores, no, three and a half lakh crores of flow, gross flow is going to enter the equity markets via retail SIPs every month, every year. And that is a big number. Over this period, and I think our report covers some of this, over this period where you've seen staggering mutual fund growth, you've also seen mobile phone subscribers grow at 12% plus. You've actually seen social media subscribers grow remarkably. India today has 80 crore people on some kind of social media. Those numbers surprised me. I think five years ago, that number was closer to 40 crores. So mobile phones have grown. Social media has grown exponentially. So social media has grown, uh, mobile phone users have grown and mutual fund adoption is picking up. But what's also grown is the number of Finfluencers, uh, you know, Finfluencer subscriber base has, and they have become an important part of now this entire ecosystem, right? Um, can you tell me how does one as an average investor or retail investor watching us right now, how do you cut through all this noise? Because there's a lot of clutter out there. 
Yeah, I, and there are two sides to it. And, you know, I read this inter interesting statistic that if you look at investing decision making, social media is one of the top five drivers of decision making. And when people go and search YouTube, half the searches are for those individual channels, not corporate channels, not things run by people like you and me who represent corporates, but channels run by individuals and influencers. And some of these guys have reach in the hundreds of thousands and also in the millions. I think as a viewer or a listener, there are a few things you have to think about. One is how credible is the person giving financial advice? And I always say, check the qualifications. I mean, you take medical advice from a qualified professional. I think you should be taking financial advice from a qualified professional. These days, everybody seems to be giving financial advice. The second is read the fine print. And there is a lot of fine print in this because the scariest thing about the negative side of influencers is the incentives to give you a particular piece of advice. So someone has told you online, Sonia, buy this. But why have they told you this? Mm. What are the hidden incentives? You know, in traditional distribution models, etc., commissions, everything is disclosed. Here it isn't disclosed. So find those disclosures. Why is someone giving you that advice? I think is uh, extremely important. And the third is, I think, do your own research. There's a lot of what I call clickbait content out there on social media, double your money in a year. You know some of this stuff is not realistic. Don't fall for the clickbait content and go and do your individual research. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so, you know, just for the benefit of our viewers and for people who perhaps are starting their journey right yeah. now, what are the primary mutual fund terms that investors in India typically search for mm -hmm. before making any investment decisions? You know, it should not surprise anyone, but it's actually all SIP related. Okay. It's systematic investment plan, best SIP to invest in, SIP calculator. The top five words, I think four of them are SIP related. How to invest. How to invest via SIP. It's all SIP related. In fact, you know, if you go to many audiences, I did this on the Shark Tank sets, and you do a poll of how many of you have heard the word mutual fund, maybe 50% will raise their hand. But if you ask how many have heard the word SIP, maybe 80, 90% wow. will raise their hands. And SIP has become a more popular word than mutual fund. In fact, it's very common for people to hear, I'm not doing a mutual fund, I'm doing an SIP. Mm. So that, and coincidentally, you've seen four to 20,000 crores, this growth in the SIP book. So SIP is actually the most popular term. The other ones are best mutual fund to invest in, and not all of these are good terms. Best mutual fund to invest in, best performing scheme to invest in. There was a mid and small cap phase also. Absolutely. You know, I have to come back to that earlier point you were making, and it's very important. You said that when people go and search on YouTube, they search more for personal brands. They search for people yeah. rather than corporate brands, right? I've seen your journey as well ever since you joined Needlewise and now on Shark Tank, you've sort of built your own personal brand. Have you seen a disproportionate rise in the number of people that come to Edelweiss to manage their money now compared to say what it was one year ago before you started building your brand? Uh, I think it's been uh, gradual for us as uh, me individually and for us as a brand. Social media has been an important part of the strategy. Uh, over the years, yes, a lot more people engage with us on social media. I mean, the number of people who write to me on Twitter with queries on how to invest for your, chi your child, yeah. which is a topic that we've spoken about. I mean, I get tons of queries about that. Uh, the number of people that come to the brand. In fact, the brand, incidentally, is the most followed mutual fund brand on Instagram today. Oh, wow. uh, so some of this is some of the gradual stuff that has started but happening. But does that lead to conversions or is it just for, um, uh, for uh, discovery? and for reach. I'm just trying to understand, does it directly lead to conversions for you? I don't think it is going to directly lead to conversions for any financial services brand. I think it is great to engage with the brand. So for us in a world where there are 40, 45 different mutual fund brands, actually now 50, how do you get discovered, especially when you're not advertising a lot offline? Online is a great way. So we think of it as brand building. We don't think I have to sell Edelweiss Midcap Fund because I'm present on social media. We want people to be aware of what the brand stands for, to connect with the brand, to do investor education on the brand. If we can just do that, conversion happens. You know, financial decision making is a lot more complex. Just because I've seen an ad, because I've heard the word Edelweiss Midcap Fund on Shark Tank, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to research the fund. I'm going to study the performance. I'm going to compare the fund. And to be honest, I should do all those things. But social media is a great way to do brand building. It's also a great way to do customer service. Mm. So when you have an aggrieved investor, if one of the funds is going through a bad run, it's a great way to communicate with partners. Okay, so we are saying that social media now serves as the primary 
influencer for young investors, right? Yes. I mean, it's fair to say that. Yeah, it does. I think for young investors, you know, the, by the way, half of the new investors to the MF industry fall in the Gen Z millennial bracket. That mm. wasn't the case a few years ago. I think that number was 30%. And if you look at where a Gen Z or millennial spends their time, 60% of their mobile time is social media. Mm. So it is obvious that influence is a very big part. And you know, that's a very important question that I keep asking people who are in this space mm -hmm. and who are perhaps using advertisers, right? Yeah. Uh, between legacy advertising platforms like say print, television, mm -hmm. radio, and the new age platforms like social media, how has the dynamics changed for the mutual fund industry over the last couple of years? How much have the spends gone down in legacy mm -hmm. and gone up in social? I think traditional brands still use legacy a lot. A brand, you know, mutual fund Sahi Hai, which is the industry's campaign, uses a lot of TV. Now that, of course, has much larger budgets, so it can afford to be effective. I think if you look at traditional brands, they do a lot of, a core amount of spend is on print, it's on outdoor, it's on television. I think very few brands are actually using social media very seriously. I think newer age brands like ours feel that perhaps we can make an impact on social media. Okay, well, I have to ask you a lot more about that. So I'm going to do one thing, I'm going to take a quick commercial break. But don't go anywhere. We'll come back in just a while to talk about the influence that social media has had on the mutual fund industry and on your investment decisions. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. We are here talking about social media influence on the mutual fund industry. And we have Radhika Gupta here with us to tell us about the pros and cons of social media's influence on the industry and on your investments rather. Uh, Radhika, now let's talk about the mutual fund distributors, right? Yeah. Why is it important for mutual fund distributors to expand their social media footprint, particularly among the millennial and Gen Z investors? You were telling me that 60% of Gen Z consumes largely social media, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure the number is much higher than that. But uh, tell us a little bit about what the approach should be from a mutual fund distributor point of view. So I think there are two things mutual fund distributors should think about. One is that if you look at a mutual fund distributor, they are very credible people. They are largely, they've been people who've spent time in the industry. They're qualified to give advice. So at a point when you're worried about uncredible, unscrupulous sources out there on social media giving advice. I always tell them, well, they're giving advice because you're not, and we need more credible people. Social media is a reality, it's not going away. So we might as well have more credible people like mutual fund distributors giving that advice. And by the way, giving that advice, not just in English, but in all kinds of vernacular languages, because our mutual fund distributors are spread across the entire country and that's where they can really connect. So it's a great distribution platform. We need credible people. The second is for mutual fund distributors. I think if you think as a business, it's an important source of potential brand building and customer acquisition. Mm. These are finally small independent businesses that are looking for reach and looking for customers. I think it's a great way. So the confluence of what is good for the distributor and what is good for the ecosystem. And we are seeing cases, individual cases of mutual fund distributors doing this extremely well. Okay, so you know, since we've established that uh, you know all the eyeballs are now moving to social media, let's try and understand what is the type of content that influencers are focusing on in the finance and investment space. And for someone who perhaps gets all their information from social media, what are the do's and don'ts? Yeah, I think in terms of you know both short form and long form content seem to have become very popular. If you look at platforms like Instagram and YouTube, shorts seem to be the most popular things. Reels, short, short form content seem to be very popular. Data driven content on stocks, on specific industries, deep data, simplified and packaged in a nice way seems to work very well. On a platform like YouTube, longer duration content, deep investment insights, that kind of stuff also exists. And people are grading their content. So even with us, we're grading content. Some content is for beginners and some content is for more evolved audience. Because with finance, you really have a wide spectrum of audience that you're catering to. Uh, again, I think my point is that as a consumer, you should be careful of the kind of content you, you're consuming. You should be making sure you're verifying content found online with a real so, uh, source because a lot of claims made online may not be true. And you should, again, I repeat, not fall for clickbait content because there's a lot of clickbait out there. So there'll be a lot of content just recommending a fund, for instance, 
on the basis of one year performance that can't be the only basis for you making a decision go verify that fund is one year performance the right metric which i think it's not study the fund outside contact a financial advisor just because you've seen a tip in a video don't go make a financial decision okay and you know sebi is doing a very good job uh, in kind of um, making sure not just clamping down on influencers but making sure that the right kind of advice is being put out and there are some uh, you know guardrails in place for the industry right as you post a lot of content yourself on mm -hmm. social media's different platforms what kind of content helps you to engage with audiences and what tips would you give someone out there who maybe wants to start a career in putting out financial content uh, but sharing content responsibly on social media yeah so i think responsibility is an important part of content i think consistency is an important part of creating content so you know content creation is work and it takes time so consistency is an important part uh simplifying content for me has been the number one thing so we we don't often realize how complicated financial jargon can be and taking the content and saying so what does it mean to an investor how can a consumer use this fund so forget flexi cap versus multi cap active versus passive how do i take some financial concept or product and use it in my day to day life how do i solve a particular problem so simplification and consumer focus i think is winning content for instance every time i have a conversation about how to invest for your child it seems to be very popular because it's a problem that all of us are grappling with so to content creators i think in anyone who's looking to use social media look at the problems that people are grappling with and try to answer them with your content in very very simple terms that seems to work authenticity sharing your own stories works really well so you know today someone asked me uh, on social media itself what are the genuine online credible sources mm -hmm. uh, for mutual fund scheme selections yeah. so i thought i'll pose this question to you because i'm sure you get this question a lot as well so of course individual amc websites have factual data sometimes they have data that you don't find in other places i'll give you a simple example most places and reports post trailing performance it's not the best metric to mention performance the best metric to measure performance is something called a rolling performance amc websites actually have a host of that information i mean i know our website for each product has that literature please check it out there are good quality aggregators uh, you know value research is one but there are many others that aggregate mutual fund data uh, you know in a reasonably reliable way so uh, what is the difference i mean for someone who's watching what yeah. is the exact difference between a trailing performance and a rolling performance so trailing performance trailing on your return is the return of the investor that invested exactly one year ago to now mm. for you as a consumer who's investing actually that number is not relevant because it has it reflects nothing on your experience over the next one year or three years mm. rolling one year performance is the return of every consumer who invested in that fund for any one year period mm. what is more relevant for you as a consumer the average of many many different consumers or of one consumer that's very very helpful yeah and I, if so if there's one statistic i look at when looking at fund performance it's for an equity fund it's the rolling 3 and 5 year performance of that equity fund and i need nothing else to make a decision when is it high what's the maximum what's the minimum what's the average it tells me everything about so the fund so on an average what should the rolling performance be of any fund now if i've invested in a fund hmm. and i check the rolling performance then yeah. what is good and what is not so good so typically check two things i mean an equity fund a large cap equity fund should have about 12 13% rolling year returns you can check how that compares to the benchmark hmm. in that same period so if the fund is doing 2 3% over the benchmark in a 5 year period That's pretty that's good. That's good enough. That's good. Okay, so that's very very helpful. Um you know coming back to our uh, subject at hand, anything that you'd want to leave our viewers with on the kind of statistics that you're seeing in the social in uh, the mutual fund industry purely cut see what you've seen with the social media growth in the recent past. Uh I think in terms of statistics as I mentioned influencers are rising in number, uh social media penetration going up and uh, my only quest to viewers is do use social media because there's a lot of good content that is being posted out there uh, a lot of people a lot of women investors come to us for simplification of content if you follow the right authentic people there's actually very valuable content out there topical content for instance a lot of clarifications like issues like kyc etc you get great, great clarifications on social media so to that extent it's already being used reasonably effectively 
Okay, well, Radhika, this was very, very helpful. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, just before we let you go, right? I mean, this is this has been a great year for you. You've done so much, not just with your business at Edelweiss. You've been on Shark Tank. You've grown your personal brand. You've done so much at Amphi as well. What does the next couple of years look like for you? Uh, I have no idea, but uh, <laughs> my my focus continues to be on growing Edelweiss AMC into a very loved uh, brand and I think we've made some headway there on trying to communicate with as many investors at large and spreading sensible financial awareness. I think that's the second part. I've written a book, maybe I'll do something else in that space, but I like engaging in content and helping people. So let's, and I'm a mom to a two year old. Oh, absolutely. That's the best part of your job. That's the right? best part of my job. <laughs> the best part of what you do. Okay. Uh, just before we wind down, you know, two years ago, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have had as much social media exposure yourself. I'm yeah. talking about your personal mm -hmm. brand. What has your learning been through it all since you've grown this brand, not just Edelweiss, but your own personal brand? And what would your advice be to several businesses who are trying to get reach, distribution? Do you think personal branding is the way to go? You know, I don't have an answer to that. I think social media is powerful. I think in a lot of corporate worlds, we're scared of social media. We're very reluctant. And I'm saying if you want to play that game, don't play it reluctantly because that reluctance will show in your content. It requires a certain tonality. It requires a certain commitment. So confidence. don't do it. Yeah, it requires a certain confidence. So either don't do it or do it a uh, whole hog. I also, you know, when I talk to a lot of corporate professionals uh, like myself, they're very scared of the trolling on social media. And what I say is that trolling is a reality. If you're putting your, yourself or your brand out there in public, you will get a lot of noise. You have to learn to tune out the noise and you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. So I know what I'm, why I'm doing what I'm doing. I know the influence it has for me, for the brand. So I know what I, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then you you let the trolling go. But don't do it reluctantly. Okay, you have to tune out the noise, right? Not yeah. just on social media, no, but, but in, in life markets in general. Also. In the markets and in life in, yeah, general, in life in right? general. Life is too short to worry about other people's Look, opinions. Correct. All right, Radhika, always great speaking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on Smart Money. Thank you. Happy weekend. Okay, and to all of you joining in, please write to us. We love receiving feedback from you. Till we meet again, happy weekend.